whenever you log into a computer, the first thing you may do is to go ahead and enter into command prompt. So you enter CMD, you see command prompt app, you hit enter on that and boom, that's a problem. And just like me, we are not a fan of this problem and we have to fix it. This generally happens when you are trying to log into a school laptop, your work laptop, and you're restricted from executing some super interesting stuff because they restrict you from going to Command Prime or PowerShell. I'm teaching you how to bypass that. You definitely want to watch to the end because I don't know if YouTube is going to take down this video. And now before we get started kids, remember, hacking is illegal. If you get caught hacking, do not tell them you know who's Mr. Hacker Loy. Now what we can do here is go ahead and close off the Command Prime that's not working. And what we can do now is go ahead and enter into say notepad, click OK on that. So what happens now is we need to do a little bit of coding, to trick the computer into executing what we want them to run. So the first thing I do is enter echo off so that whatever we are executing do not get displayed. So it gives us a cleaner output. So this is a label that is the beginning of a loop. Next up, we set the variable comp for whatever is entered after CMD followed by that curly thing. And a super interesting part right here is where we execute COMM variable. And finally, we jump back into the label and this allows us to create an infinite loop. And once you're ready, go ahead and save this file to your favorite location. And in this case, I will save it over to desktop and I'll call this hackerloy.bat. Hit save on that, done. So what I can do now is I can go ahead and execute on this. So when I double click, you can see right here there is a prompt. So let me zoom in a little more so it's easier for you to see. Click under phone, click under say 28, click OK on that. And let's see what we can do right here. So what I'll do right now is to go ahead and enter something like print working directory. All right, so that does not work because we are on Windows. So I enter DIR and you can see right here, we are directory of users, Loy Leung Young desktop. And we can list all of this information. In fact, I can even enter, say for example, all right, let's see whether this works. Who am I? Mm -hmm. We are Loy Leung Young. And what if I enter something like net user Loy Liang Yang? What do we get right here? All right, this user is part of the administrators group, as you can see right here. And I can enter net user and see the list of all of the users that are within the computer. And of course, we have one of our favorite person here, a script Kitty Loy. <laughs> so when we try to do a direct access into command prompt over here, what happens is that we get a deny. Now the question is, is there something else we can use that can help us call command? And one of the really interesting options is to use the FTP service to help us do the command. Wait a minute, you don't believe Mr. Hackaloy? I thought we were best friend forever. So now when you go back to the Windows computer, all you gotta do right here is go to bottom left and through FTP hit run command over here. So let me once again zoom in a little more so it's easier for you to see. So what I can do now is click on our properties and let's go ahead and give a 28 font. And what I can do right here now is to enter some interesting stuff, which is an exclamation mark followed by say DIR. All right, so it shows us all of this information right here. I can also go ahead and enter say net user. See what we get right here. We have Loy Liang Yang, we have script kitty Loy, default user zero and all of that. So we're leveraging on a service which can help us run those commands that we wanted to execute on for us. Super cool. So this happens because of the local group policy I did it. You go to the bottom left side, go ahead and enter local group policy, click into edit group policy. And this is the place where you can configure the restriction of cmd.exe as well as say PowerShell. So you go under user configuration, M Street templates. And over here, what you can do is go ahead and click on to click on the system. And right here, you can see the following prevent access to command prompt. Double click on this and you can easily enter enable. All right, so this will allow us to disable the run of CMD. And you can see right here too, don't run specific Windows application. And in this case, it could also be a restriction of PowerShell. So once I click on the don't run specify Windows application, you can see right here, we have the list of this along application. I click show and you can see the information over here, which is PowerShell.exe. So when you go to the bottom left side again, I enter PowerShell, Dot exe. I hit OK on that and it states the following. This operation has been cancelled due to restrictions in effect on this computer. Please contact your system administrator. So now the question of course is, how can we bypass that? Again, 
one super simple trick is to think about what else can call PowerShell. And of course, in this case, PowerShell and score ISE.exe allow us to do PowerShell. All right, so in this case, what is ISE? Well, it is basically an integrated scripting environment. So literally, we can do whatever we want here by entering all those commands. Say, for example, I can enter the same command here by enumerating or listing down all the users within the local computer. I can enter net user, and we can get all the lists of the users within the computer. Say, for example, best friend, script Kitty Loy right here. If I copy the same file somewhere else, would that still work? Because it could be pointing to a path so that's the first option you want to try. Now the first option here is to go ahead and copy where PowerShell is located. And now we want to target it into the desktop directory. Hit enter on that. Okay. And now we've done the copy. Now the question is, would this work? So once I'm here, I double clicked on it. It says the following. This operation has been canceled due to restrictions in fact on this computer. Please contact your system administrator. No worries. We just have to try harder. And what I do now is I'm going to rename powershell.exe and just say powershell hacker alloy.exe. It's the same file. It's just a rename of the file. I double clicked on it. Boom, we are in. Look at that. This is crazy. How can this even work? <laughs> just by renaming the file. The other interesting part is they could be using the hash value of the file. As you can see right here, we are on Windows settings and then followed by security settings and then under software restriction policy and additional rules. And right here we have PowerShell.exe, which takes in as a hash value. So when I double click onto here, you can see the following, which is hash rule. All right, so when I go ahead and browse, we can target any form of executables. And this allows the use and the check of those hash value based on the executable. And we can easily change this up a little, which will then allow us to do execute on the file. So what I'll do now is go ahead and disable don't run specified Windows application. Click apply on that, click OK, because we're testing out the other hash rule here. So what I can do right now is go ahead and launch a good friend. And what I can do here is to change up a little bit of the value in PowerShell.exe and see whether we're able to execute on it. So what I've entered here is to copy from System32, Windows PowerShell version 1.0, PowerShell.exe into user desktop. I go ahead and hit enter on that, done. So we can see the file on the left. So we have the PowerShell.exe right here. So the proof and test it out, let's go ahead and move this over into the center a little. And I double clicked on it and it says the following, your system administrator has blocked this program. For more information, contact your system administrator, whatever. So what we want to do now is to change up the value of this a little and see if we're able to launch PowerShell. And what we do here is to append it to PowerShell.exe, hit enter, done. Double click onto PowerShell.exe, boom, we're in. We managed to change up the value of the executable and this gives us access to PowerShell. And remember kids, that's how you do hacking.